In this lecture, I want to introduce you to a web-based utility called Cloudinary. As we began to develop more and more models in Insight Maker and use more and more images, it got to a point where you know, almost every time that I would open a, a model, I'd find at least one broken image link in it. And it frustrated me enough. Going to, to find another image to replace it was just terribly, terribly annoying. So I went looking for a utility, and I found this thing called Cloudinary, which is a, is a web-based utility meant to manage images. And it's, it has a pricing structure so that it's a free utility for up to 75,000 images, 2 gigabytes of storage, and 5 gigabytes of monthly bandwidth. And I would think that that is probably more than you will ever use if you're just using images for Insight Maker models. So you can consider Cloudinary to essentially be a free resource. And if you just go ahead and, and set up your <clears throat> username and password, once you get your account, you sign in, and the first thing it will do is it will ask you about a, a development environment. Just go ahead and ignore that and tell it that you want to go right to the media library. After you end up with things in your library, it this dashboard will tell you about the number of new images, the total number of images, the amount of storage and bandwidth. But I expect that you won't even come close to reaching the, the limits for, for a free account. But if you go to media library, here is where you go ahead and actually add your images to the environment. There are a number of different options. I decided that the easiest one was to just sequence my images starting with 0001. And, and because I can tell what the last one was, when I get ready to add one, it's it's easy to just go ahead and tell it what the, the next one is. So I don't use this option for loading files because I'm going to specify what my ID is. And I also add some tags to make it easier to search for them. So, I mean, I have tags. Um, so if I search for graph, I have a number of graphs that I've saved. If I search for STW, there's the logo. If I search for logo, I have a number of logos that I've saved. So when you are actually doing this input, you get to do an ID number and a set of tags separated by commas that will make it easier for you to find stuff. Now, you have two options. You can either put the URL here for a image that you found someplace out on the web that you want to load into Cloudinary, or you can have the image sitting in a file on your desktop, and you can pull it from there to load it into here. So if I go and find an image, one that I was looking for before, money, tell it that I want to look at the images, and th this one looks good, I guess. Now notice that, that this is a 1280 by 720 image. If I view the image itself, it looks a little fuzzy, so I, I don't think I want that one. Um, let, me, let me try this one. That one's look a little, a little fuzzy also. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's my eyes today. Yeah, I think the network's slow and it's not clearing up the images. Now, see, here's an instance where I clicked on this and I went to view image and I didn't get a page of an image, which which happens from time to time. You just, you sort of have to work with them and find out which one. So here, if I view image, all right, I got a nice JPEG URL. I'll copy this. I'll go back to Cloudinary and I'll put this in here. Since this is 0255, I'll make this 0256, and I'll say money, bills, face, which sort of describes what it was. Tell it to upload it. It then loads that image. If I click on that image, it shows me the full size of that image where I can delete it. 
there are also a whole set of, of options available for things that you can do to manipulate the image when you pull it out of the library, none of which I have ever used for anything, but they're there in case you want to, to scale or rotate or change the borders or change the shape of the image. It's, it's a remarkable utility in terms of capability. It's just what I need to use on an ongoing basis is very little of it. So in this view, I could right click and grab this, um, copy this, copy the link address and paste that into my Insight Maker map. Though this is a very large image and the larger the image, this image is 182K, the larger the image, the longer it takes to load it. And most of the images that I want to use in my Insight Maker maps are small anyway. So I can just right click here and say copy image URL. And I just use this thumbnail. So I go back here and put this in as the custom image. So notice now that it says cloudinary.com image, it's a thumbnail, and it's from STW, which is my username in Cloudinary. So I do this. So now I get that image, which is being pulled from my Cloudinary account so that I won't ever have to worry about this image being broken. Um, so, any, you know, I can walk through, I can search through them or... I can sort of page through my images, um, and I, I find it very easy. Um, usually, what I'll do is I'll set up, I'll go ahead and, and develop the model. I'll go out on Google. Once I get the model done, I'll go search for all of the images, and I'll put them in Cloudinary and put them in the model after I do the model, as opposed to bouncing back and forth for every single element in the model as I'm developing the model. It's, uh, I, I find that it takes, it eats up too much of my time bouncing back and forth. I'll go ahead and develop the model, and then I'll, I'll add the images to it once I've sort of got the model set as to what I think it's supposed to be. So hope you found this informative about how to use Cloudinary to manage your images so that you don't end up with broken ones in your Insight Maker models. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.